sir, are a scholar and a gentleman. One beautiful day, an ordinary family is celebrating a child's birthday. Dad is grilling barbecue, mom is chatting with friends, while the kids are amazed by a cowboy's lasso throwing skills. Later, the children go to eat cake, and Cooper's daughter suddenly freezes, staring at the horizon. The man turns around and sees a huge nuclear mushroom cloud rising over the city. The next minute, the blast wave reaches their home. The owner hides his family in a shelter, while Cooper and his daughter jump on a horse and ride away as nuclear mushrooms rise behind him. 219 years have passed. Lucy is a young woman who possesses many skills and lives in shelter number 33 with her father and brother Norman. Unfortunately, it's impossible to find a man who wouldn't be related to her. Therefore, the council decides to allow her to take a husband from another colony. The happy girl puts on the communal wedding dress, while her neighbors, led by her father, the shelter's warden, prepare tables for the wedding, displayed in a field surrounded by a 3D image of distant mountains. The father is happy for his daughter, regretting that her mother didn't live to see her wedding. Then comes the moment when people head to the portal, guarded by the gatekeeper Chad, Lucy's cousin. He has long loved the girl, but must admit the fairness of genetic ethics. The young man presses a button, the portal opens, letting in a delegation from a neighboring colony. Their leader reminds that for fresh blood, they must receive seeds and spare parts for machinery, and a young man is brought to Lucy. Their marriage is registered, and everyone sits at the tables. The shelter's residents notice that the guests are rather uncouth, but decide not to focus on this. Lucy's father delivers a speech, hoping that the next generation might finally live on the surface. People dance and enjoy themselves, much to Norman's displeasure. The groom asks the girl to show him the bedroom, and she leads him to the room. The young couple begins to perform their duties while Norman patrols the colony and suddenly finds the body of one of the colonists. And Lucy unexpectedly hears a distant scream. She puts on a universal bracelet, which instantly shows that her young husband is infected with radiation, indicating he came from the surface. Realizing he's been found out, he lunges at her and throws her against the wall. Dazed, the girl watches as the guy takes a knife and prepares to kill her. Lucy remembers her skills and tries to take the knife, but the man stabs her in the side. At that moment, an alarm sounds. The man gets distracted, and Lucy knocks him out with a vase hit to the head, then administers first aid to herself and rushes to the armory, where she finds a pistol and hurries to the room where her fellow tribesmen remained. She kills an alien she encounters, but upon leaving the room, she witnesses a real battle. Lucy manages to save Norman when her unmade husband appears, but her father drowns the son-in-law in a barrel of water and rushes to a signal about a breach in the doors. Lucy runs after him and freezes in front of a team of aliens who have taken the shelter's residents hostage. The attacker's leader offers the man a choice, his fellow tribesmen or Lucy. As the girl tries to understand what this means, her father locks her in a compartment, after which his captors take him with them from the surface when an explosion destroys the gates. Meanwhile, on the surface of the earth, in the Brotherhood of Steel Barracks, young men are beating one of them, Paladin Maximus. His friend helps the guy recover and leads him to classes where they are taught useful wasteland skills, as soon they will serve as knights. They are seekers and guardians, and must be able to distinguish ancient artifacts. At this time, to the Paladin's great admiration, Steel Knights arrive at the base. Later, the friend leads Maximus to a hangar where their armor is stored to look at them. Later, Maximus hears cries of jubilation and finds out that some of them were promoted. Among them is his friend, who will become the assistant to Knight Titus. But in the morning, the barracks are awakened by a wild scream. It turns out that someone put a blade in the future assistant's boot and the girl severely injured her foot. Maximus is arrested and led to the Brotherhood's leader. In the shelter, order is being restored. Lucy is stitching up her stomach wound and people gather for a council meeting. She requests that a squad be assembled and sent to the surface to search for her father. However, the council refuses to do this. Lucy then gathers the necessary items and heads to the gates, accompanied by her brother. Chad rushes to go with her, but she sedates him and says goodbye to Norman. The gates open and the girl steps onto the surface. She surveys the world of sand, where traces of the past tragedy still linger, and walks towards the sea. Maximus is accused of maiming a comrade out of envy, but he denies it. The leader realizes the boy is not guilty and appoints him as an assistant to the Steel Knight. 
The next day, the leader assigns the knights and their assistants the task of finding an escaped scientist who has stolen a very important object. Knight Titus and Maximus load up on a helicopter and fly to their designated sector. At the same time, a band of bounty hunters lures a wild ghoul from the grave to find this scientist heading to the witch Moldover, with whom the ghoul has old ties. Unexpectedly, the ghoul shoots the hunters and sets off on his own accord. Lucy travels across the surface and one day stops to camp near an abandoned house. She makes a fire and falls asleep by it. She awakens to strange sounds and sees a dog devouring a huge insect. A man sitting by her fire explains that the cockroaches not only survived the nuclear blast, they mutated and are now very dangerous. He advises the girl to return to the shelter as she does not know the rules of the outer world. But Lucy is obliged to find her father. The man leaves. Meanwhile, the Steel Knight and Maximus land in the right sector. Near their landing spot, the fugitive scientist and his dog hide in a cave. Sometime later, the knight and his assistant arrive there. Maximus immediately finds the sought-after scientist tracks, and the knight heads into the cave. Maximus is also forced to go with him, though he has no armor. Inside, a giant mutant cave bear attacks them. The knight engages in combat, but the beast overpowers him, and Titus suddenly starts to run. Maximus barely manages to kill the huge beast. The knight turns out to be a weak man who blames and insults the boy. Then Maximus refuses to revive the wounded knight and lets him die, deciding to find the fugitive himself. He dons the armor himself and learns to use it. The boy is amazed at how his strength has increased and the boundless opportunities that have opened up before him. Incidentally, he saves a weakling, although it turns out that the person was not very good. He realizes that he needs to figure out who is worthy of protection first. Lucy reaches a town where she was advised to look for traces of her father's kidnappers. She enters one of the shops, where an elderly saleswoman, recognizing her as a shelter resident, advises the girl to leave this place. Shelters are underground havens where the rich hid while the world perished, so no one here will help her. The girl goes outside where the scientist with the dog approaches her again, surprised that she is still here. But then the saleswoman, who turns out to be waiting for him, calls out to him. And suddenly, the ghoul appears, who has also come for the scientist. He intends to take him when the saleswoman promises money to anyone who helps protect the scientist. Then the ghoul shoots the scientist in the leg to prevent him from escaping and engages in battle with those who want the reward. The ghoul shoots everyone while Lucy sneaks into the shop, finds the order book, and learns the address of Moldover. She wants to leave, but sees how the ghoul injures the scientist's dog and hears his plea for help. She stands up for him and shoots the ghoul with a capsule, which only makes him laugh. Then a knight lands in front of the ghoul. Maximus asks the girl to look after the scientist while he fights the ghoul. She and the saleswoman take the injured scientist into the shop, where the woman attaches an iron leg to him and offers to accompany him to Moldover, giving her the coordinates. The pair leave while the ghoul fights the knight and quickly finds his weak spot. Maximus has not yet mastered all the advantages of the suit, which costs him losing his navigation ability. The Iron Knight is thrown far from the shop, and at that moment, the ghoul realizes that his target has escaped. Meanwhile, Lucy and the scientist stop to rest, and the girl watches in horror at the scientist's bloodied leg. She realizes they won't make it, and the man confirms this. He confesses that he will soon die, but she must definitely deliver his head to Moldover. He pulls out a saw and dies. Sometime later, the ghoul finds the headless body of the scientist amidst the sandy wasteland and follows the tracks of Lucy, who is carrying the head to Moldover. Soon, the girl stops to rest and, after snacking, examines the head, wondering what is so special about it. Just in case, she inserts a tracking device into its nostril. Maximus examines the armor and finds a malfunction. Suddenly, he is called from the base, which surprises him. He reports the death of his assistant and his promise to replacement, though he vehemently opposes this. The boy heads to the nearest town, where he finds a workshop and paying all the money he has repairs the broken module. But when he returns to the suit, he discovers a gang of local marauders trying to dismantle the armor for scrap metal. He engages in a fight, but is hit hard in the face. The boy regains consciousness to see that the armor has been breached. He grabs a piece of metal lying nearby and uses it to destroy the attackers. Then he sees a helicopter arriving, dropping off a new assistant. The assistant turns out to be one of his tormentors from the training camp. 
Maximus manages to close the helmet, and the new assistant does not notice the substitution. Lucy reaches the place where Hollywood once stood. She stops by a pond when an unknown monster attacks her, snatching the backpack with the scientist's head and disappearing into the water. Lucy tries to track the thief but is caught in the ghoul's sights, to whom she explains what happened with the head. At this time, the Shelter Council conducts an investigation into Lucy's escape, after which Norman realizes that no one intends to search for either his father or sister. In the desert, Maximus torments the assistant with various misdeeds, avenging past humiliations, but the latter continues to serve the Steel Knight willingly. They find the ghoul's tracks with a special device, follow them, and find the headless body of the scientist. Meanwhile, the ghoul sets up a hunt for the underwater monster, using the girl as bait. Soon, the beast emerges onto the shore. It grabs Lucy, but the ghoul manages to pull her out. The girl barely manages to fend off the attack, but the underwater monster escapes, taking her boot. The enraged ghoul drags Lucy along. At this time, the Steel Knight's assistant fills the armor with water, talking about his life. Suddenly, Maximus asks him to talk about himself. The boy confesses that, in fact, he was a decent guy, and they beat him as part of the tradition like any other newbie. Now he regrets that Maximus didn't live to be called up for service. They move on and soon reach the pond. The pair enters the water and immediately sees the monster. Maximus demands the assistant to go ashore and takes on the fight himself, but the boy shoots at the creature and it chases after him. Maximus manages to pull the boy from the monster's jaws, and it dies, spitting out the scientist's head and Lucy's boot in its last act. Then a dog runs up to them, which continues on with them. The ghoul leads Lucy through the wasteland, denying her water, and soon they arrive at the place where a movie studio once stood, where actor Cooper and his wife worked. Soon they reach an abandoned clinic from which male screams can be heard. Entering, they find an old acquaintance of the ghoul, undergoing mutation and suffering because of it. The condition could be alleviated with special medication, but the ghoul doesn't have any, so the ghoul relieves the poor soul from his misery. The girl doesn't understand why he did it, but he explains they need something to eat. The girl mentions that they also had it tough, but never ate their own kind. Then the ghoul forces Lucy to cut up the body to take this meat with them. They continue on, although it becomes increasingly difficult for the girl without water. Soon the ghoul stops in front of a structure where radioactive water has accumulated. Lucy can't resist and starts drinking it, earning her companion's approval. She is finally beginning to understand the life of the wasteland. He is her future and it won't be long now. Then he coughs and Lucy tries to use this moment to escape, but stops in front of a huge crater where she gets caught in his lasso. She tries to break free and accidentally bites off the ghoul's finger, for which he cuts off one of her fingers. Soon they reach an old supermarket, where the ghoul offers the woman in exchange for the items he needs. Stunned, Lucy enters the building, not noticing that the ghoul falls into unconsciousness. Inside, she is greeted by a robot. It invites Lucy to follow and implants a new finger for her. Then it pities her and confesses it will just take her organs, and immediately sedates her. Later in the shelter, Norman is delivering food to the aliens captured during an attack, and one of them confesses that the inhabitants of Shelter Number 32, which they captured before this, were planning something very bad. Norman tries to access the network to find information about Shelter Number 32, but the data are classified. Together with Chad, they clear the debris and penetrate Shelter Number 32, where they find a devastated field in the desiccated corpses of the inhabitants. But if they were dead when the aliens arrived, it turns out they killed each other. Lucy wakes up and sees many women locked in glass cabinets, ready to be dissected for organs. The robot prepares to open her chest cavity, but cuts her bonds instead, and she wriggles out from under its saw and disables the robot. Then she fills syringes with drain cleaner, reprograms the robot, and in its company, goes to the owners of the dreadful place. She forces them to release the prisoners and people flee but not all. Lucy forces the opening of the last cages. The owners comply and out come zombies who immediately tear apart two organ traders. Lucy surveys the battlefield in horror as the last zombie prepares to attack her, but she finds a pistol in her hand. Norman and Chad continue their inspection of the neighboring shelter and learn that its door was opened from the outside with a key bearing the name of Norman and Lucy's mother. 
and Lucy finds medicine to sustain the ghoul's life, and despite the torture she endured, she hands the medication to the ghoul. Maybe she will look like him on the outside, but inside, she will never be like him. The girl leaves, and the ghoul goes into the shattered store and takes the necessary meds to bring himself to a relative semblance of order. Then he stuffs his hat with medicines, but then he notices a video recorder, puts in an old tape where Cooper plays a cowboy, and sits down in front of the television. Maximus and his assistant settle down to rest. Thaddeus cannot contain his delight at being rescued, as knights rarely treat their assistants kindly. He asks to be branded. Maximus obliges and lifts his helmet. However, upon recognizing him, the assistant attacks, resulting in Maximus breaking his leg. But Thaddeus manages to extract a nuclear core from the armor, immobilizing the exoskeleton, and leaves, taking the scientist's head with him. Giant cockroaches immediately attack the immobilized suit. Maximus, terrified, awaits his death when the insects scatter from gunfire, and Lucy approaches the knight. She explains why she needs the scientist's head and helps the man out of the suit, and he gives her medication for radiation sickness. When Lucy recovers, she suggests they go after the head together, since she has a tracker. They will hand it over to the Brotherhood, in return for which the Knights will help her find her father. Maximus agrees. At the same time, in Shelter 33, instead of her father, Betty is elected as the Warden. Norman dislikes this and studies the history of the Shelter. Suddenly, he realizes that all caretakers were selected from the residents of Shelter 31. Lucy and Maximus reach a bridge where they are stopped by a pair of vagrants. They pretend to be scared and ask for permission to pass. The couple, raising their hands, tries to walk away. However, the suspicious Maximus manages to shoot first, saving their lives. Though he injures his hand and Lucy realizes how naive the shelter's residents are. Soon they reach a billboard of the new Californian Republic. The girl is upset because they live with the belief that they are meant to revive America, but it turns out everything has already happened on the surface. Maximus reassures her, as there is no Republic anyway. Soon they arrive at a huge crater in the middle of the city. The boy confesses that he survived this hell by hiding in a refrigerator, but then Lucy realizes that Maximus's wound is much more serious and leads him to a building with a clinic sign. Maximus lags behind, and when he enters, the girl is nowhere to be found. He searches for her and enters a chamber between two doors. The space fills with gas, causing the boy to lose consciousness. Betty leads her people to Shelter 32 to announce a partial relocation, as these resources are too valuable. Chad and Norman are surprised to see that the bodies have been removed, and all traces of the tragedy have disappeared. Norman inquires about the whereabouts of his mother's key after her death. Betty confesses that they buried the woman with it. Maximus and Lucy come to in the shelter on stretchers. Maximus receives medical care. The shelter leader asks the couple to stay, as the boy needs treatment. Moreover, the suppliers have found armor and will soon deliver it here. Lucy thanks them for the refuge, and the leader informs her that she was born on the surface, like many of them. The couple spends several hours in quarantine. From the conversation, it turns out that Maximus never knew a woman's love. Lucy is ready to teach him this art, as it is considered natural in the shelter. But the boy is embarrassed, moreover it is not customary among knights. Later they go to lunch, where they suddenly notice that many of the surrounding people have various physical deformities. The caretaker turns out to be a cyclops. For Lucy, this is strange, but Maximus does not understand her concern. Later, the caretaker confesses to Lucy that they accept people from the surface, which surprises the girl since this was strictly forbidden in her shelter. But when she asks about the forbidden level they were advised not to visit, the caretaker immediately ends the conversation. Maximus finds a room where a nuclear block is installed, powering the entire underground. The leader hands him an electronic key to his personal compartment and suggests he rest a bit. The boy enters, and upon entering, he is amazed to see a basket filled with various delicacies and things he has never seen before. For the first time in his life, he takes a real shower, puts on a robe and slippers, and indulges in unknown products. Meanwhile, Lucy finds a room where the entire history of the Californian Republic is vividly described. It turns out that life here was revived in 2142, but was destroyed in 2277. Lucy is horrified, wondering who needed a new war and why. But then all the shelter inhabitants hear a sound signal and head to the designated place. 
Meanwhile, a ghoul is caught by the so-called new president of the territory who owned a supermarket trading in organs, and the ghoul is blamed for its destruction. However, he calmly asks for a needle and thread to sew his finger back on and asks for directions to find Moldover. But the president orders the ghoul to be killed. The ghoul has to destroy the new law enforcers and search for the woman himself. Lucy comes with everyone to a room, in the center of which stands an altar with burning candles. People begin to sing something, moving their hands, and Lucy gradually falls into a trance, supporting the others. Unexpectedly, people start to undress, which shocks Lucy. A bowl goes around, from which everyone takes some powder and smears their faces. And suddenly, Lucy realizes with horror that it is the ashes of the deceased. In another bowl, there is blood. People call to the mother of flame, who must save them, and an image of Moldover unfolds above their heads. A frightened Lucy runs to Maximus and urges him to run away quickly, but the boy has just found himself in such paradisiacal conditions and does not want to leave. So Lucy heads to the forbidden level. She enters a laboratory where apparently some genetic experiments on people were conducted. The girl is horrified as she examines the gruesome exhibits and notices glass cryocapsules containing human bodies. But then the lights turn on and a man in a white coat enters. Lucy hides, but he hears a noise, follows it, and finds the girl. Lucy fights, but the men who arrive seize her and drag her to the upper level. Meanwhile, the ghoul arrives at the digger's house, whose eldest son knows the location of Moldover. The frightened man orders the boy to tell everything he knows, and he admits that the woman can be found at the observatory. But when the ghoul is about to leave, the boy tries to kill him and pays with his life for it. At the same time, the shelter leaders shame Lucy as they had given her refuge, fed her, and healed her friend. But the girl is furious because she has seen what they do to people. Then they show her the complete recording of the attack on the laboratory of the very monster that almost devoured her too. It was the first inhabitants of the shelter who experimented on people, turning them into monsters. They are only trying to alleviate the pain of those who survived. The fact is that each shelter specializes in some experiment, and Lucy just doesn't know this. Nevertheless, she must be punished for her disobedience. The girl is led away, which Maximus sees. Thaddeus makes a stop to rest and realizes that his leg is in very bad condition. A dog bothers him, and he locks it in a metal box, then sets off to find a radio tower to contact the Brotherhood. At this time, the inhabitants of the shelter sentence Lucy to exile to the surface. Moreover, they supply her with a stock of food. The girl is stunned, as this is exactly what she wanted. Nevertheless, in her last words, she asks them to allow her friend to stay. But then Maximus appears in knight's armor, into which he has inserted the nuclear block he just stole. He scatters the men when the girl stops him, as they are letting her go anyway. They go up to the surface, and learning that he stole the nuclear block, Lucy convinces him to return it, as the shelter cannot survive without energy. They drop the block down, and Lucy, moved, calls him a good person. Then he confesses that he allowed a knight to perish and took his armor, so he is not a good person at all, but he really wants to go with her. Thaddeus is caught up by a man who calls himself a doctor and promises to fix his leg. He takes the boy to an abandoned clinic where, in exchange for a nuclear block, he gives him a potion that, when drunk, Thaddeus ecstatically sees his leg heal. Meanwhile, the ghoul finds the locked dog that Thaddeus left behind, and it leads him on Thaddeus' trail. At the same time, the boy reaches the radio station, around which traps are set that tear those who come too close to pieces. Thaddeus sends a signal to the Brotherhood in waiting for their arrival, chats with the radio station owner about music. Then Maximus and Lucy appear. The girl asks for the scientist's head. The boy accidentally steps on a trap and an arrow pierces his neck. But strangely, he does not think of dying. And then Maximus realizes that he has become a zombie. Thaddeus is upset. He should not have trusted the unfamiliar doctor. But now the path to the Brotherhood is closed for him, as they would kill him immediately. At that moment, copters appear on the horizon. Maximus suggests to Titus to give him the scientist's head and run, and the boy takes this opportunity. Then Maximus gives the head to Lucy and picks up a head of some unfortunate lying nearby, torn apart in a trap. He asks the girl to run, and she kisses him and promises to wait in shelter 33. Some inhabitants of shelter number 33 begin to receive notifications about relocation to the neighboring block. Seizing the opportunity, Norman enters the caretaker system, deceitfully gains access to Shelter 31, and heads there. 
The arriving servants take Maximus and bring him to the camp. The boy hands over the head he obtained to the leader and confesses that his knight perished. After finding nothing in the head, they sentence him to death. And then his friend confesses that she had cut her own leg because she was scared to go searching. Maximus shouts that he knows where to find the real head. The leader orders him to be released and everyone prepares for a performance. At that time, Lucy reaches the observatory where her father is sitting in a cage. Sitting at the table, Moldover greets the girl, who is horrified to see a dried up yet still living mummy seated next to the hostess. The girl is willing to give her the head in exchange for freedom. Moldover extracts a vial from the head and offers to listen to the real story of her father. Although he begs his daughter not to listen, the woman begins her story. Meanwhile, Norman finds a robot with a human brain in the secret shelter 31, which immediately tries to inject him with something. The boy barely dodges the crazy machine. Moldaver's story transports Lucy to the distant pre-war years when actor Cooper, agitated by his wife's talks of an impending nuclear war, decides to follow her. He comes to her work and listens to a corporate council meeting through a bug he planted on his wife. Billionaires discuss the decline in sales worldwide. Then they move on to the topic of shelters. Someone does not understand their necessity, arguing that if anyone survives on the surface, those emerging from the shelters will simply be killed. They counter that one could live underground for centuries as there are vast reserves. Time is their main weapon. One could simply outlive the rest. A debate erupts among the corporate leaders, interrupted by Cooper's wife. She thinks primarily of her daughter and wants to secure the best future for her. In the future, Norman reaches a room where rows of cryo capsules stand with the names of those who slept in them, including all the wardens, his father among them. The action returns to the past, where Cooper's wife reveals that over 100 shelters have been built across America, so each of them could fulfill their wildest dreams. In the future, the robot explains to Norman that all these people were selected for their creative thinking and positivity. They are the country's best gene pool, destined to revive the nation after the surface is cleansed. In the past, the debate flares up again, as destroying so many people is not easy. Then Cooper's wife suggests to start the war themselves. A nuclear war is a tragedy, but also the greatest opportunity to start anew, because then there will be no one left to fight they will become monopolists of the entire world. At this point, Cooper is distracted by a young man who would like to get an autograph, and this is Lucy's young father. In the present, Moldover explains that the man has lived for a very long time. He is part of the corporation that orchestrated all this horror, but he never spoke about it to his wife. She was very smart. It was she who discovered that something was draining water from the shelter. She realized that civilization had returned, but her husband mocked her. Then the woman took the children and fled. They found a wonderful city, but her father came with his men and burned it down. Lucy brought Moldover the coal fusion she developed and stolen by corporations, infinite energy with which life can be revived. Lucy sees a pendant on the mummy's neck that belonged to her mother and realizes what happened to her. Her father begs her not to believe Moldover, but the girl demands that he give her the synthesis code. He relents and provides the numbers. The woman leaves for the laboratory to start the cold fusion process. Meanwhile, the robot informs Norman that it will not let him leave after what he has learned. At the same time, Lucy's father pleads with her to open the cage and return home, just as an alarm sounds and Brotherhood copters appear over the observatory, opening fire on the people below. Knights and their assistants descend to the ground and engage in battle with the observatory's defenders. Maximus rushes forward, searching for Lucy, while the knights wreak havoc around. Soon the knights burst inside the building, where they are suddenly stopped by a ghoul. It turns out he too once wore armor and knows their vulnerabilities. Thus he easily shoots the Iron Knights, remaining unharmed himself. At this time Lucy cries, torn between her father's pleas to come home and the terrible situation of her mother. But then at the room's threshold, a wounded knight falls, followed by Maximus. He opens the cage and rushes to Lucy. However, the girl confesses that it was her father who destroyed his wonderful city. Her father, meanwhile, dons armor and throws Maximus aside, knocking him unconscious. The girl pulls out a gun, but then the ghoul enters the room. When he learned Lucy's surname, he couldn't believe that this was the same guy from the corporation. He had waited over 200 years to find out where his family was. 
Lucy's father activates jet engines and flees. However, it turns out that this was exactly what the ghoul needed, as the man leaves a trail that can easily be followed to the place where the world's rulers are hiding, those who orchestrated the nuclear war. He urges Lucy to come with him. Then Lucy shoots the mummy, says goodbye to the unresponsive Maximus, and follows the ghoul. At the same time, an injured Moldover returns to the room where Maximus regains consciousness. She has activated the nuclear synthesis and now people have infinite energy. A stunned Maximus watches as surviving lanterns light up over the ruins of the city while Moldover smiles and dies. The Brotherhood members who rush in think their comrade killed the woman and celebrate Maximus as a future knight. Meanwhile, the ghoul and Lucy follow the trail of her father, who heads through the desert to a distant city. The series ends there.